this has been an extremely informative session. Uh, I, you know, I really want to thank my colleagues here who have all participated in this. And before we end this discussion, I, I'd just like to get final thoughts from, uh, from each of the panelists. And Joe, maybe we can start with you. Yeah, I think it's an exciting era right, right across the spectrum in prostate cancer. We've seen data in hormone sensitive disease and castrate resistant disease. I think we're seeing the beginning of the genomic era, which is really exciting. And I think for patients, massive amount of choice. But for us clinicians making decisions for patients, I think it's even more important for us to try and make the right decision based on what's important to the patient, what are their priorities, and their state of health. Excellent. Excellent. Chuck? So two words that come to mind as I'm listening to my colleagues are clarify and classify. I think we have data now clarifying a variety of, uh, of unanswered questions, sort of gray areas in our disease. The CARD study, for example, I think is really definitive in terms of just saying that, you know, for the, for the most part, for the population, the second AR targeted drug is, is probably not the best option. Uh, classify is classify your patient, whether it be genomic classification and looking for a PARP inhibitor use as they become available, that's now becoming something that you can't not know about. You have to know about genomic sequencing uh, or you're, it's a disservice to your patient. I would also say classify applies to the non-metastatic space, the low versus high volume uh, uh, hormone sensitive space. Um, so we're beginning to see the, the disease enter into new diff different classes. It's not just about metastasis, yes, no, hormone resistance, yes, no, it's high volume, low volume, BRCA2, BRCA1, et cetera, et cetera. So it's getting more complex, makes it more interesting. And what's great is that we now uh, can speak with a little bit more clarity to our patients about the therapeutic options that they have. Fantastic. Chris? I 100% agree with all of that. And the one notion is future horizon scanning. I'm hoping we can get to a point with all this new knowledge of getting to a point of doing testosterone suppression, sorry, AR inhibition with a potent AR inhibitor plus a new targeted therapy without background AR suppression, uh, testosterone suppression, and have something like heart for HIV. So we may have an AR inhibitor, an amide plus um, PR3 kinase inhibitor plus NF-kappa B or whatever, and have a triplet of therapies that really do much better than what we do now. Fantastic. I think if I look at the next year, don't try to see the longer picture, we have, first of all, a huge education challenge. I think, as mentioned by Chris, the strategy we've been following so far was more, if you can't convince, confuse. <laughs> uh, we have no convincing evidence, so we should really you know, stress on deconfusing people. I don't know if it exists in English. But we need, we, we're going to have to increase two type of formation. The, the first, as you understand from Chris' explanation on newly diagnosed metastatic, we need to enhance the ability of community physician understanding what paper mean and how to read the paper. I think that that's very important and help them in this. And the second one, we have a, a huge challenge in genomic. To me, the imaging data, I would say that most of the urologists in Europe I know very well, which are extremely good guy, who treat patients in a very high level quality, the same for the medical oncologist. They have no idea about the difference between ATM, bilalic, DNA repair loss. So we facing a huge education challenge and we should actually give as much energy in this uh, I would even say before we plan the next generation of trial. I, I, I think it, 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 these are all excellent points. And I would just add one more to Chuck, just because he brought up the C, clarify. I was looking for a third anyway. Personalized, and we can do PCC, so it's prostate choice, choice, cancer. No, choice, choice. Personalized. Well, yes, well choice. 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 Yeah. choice. Yeah, clarifying choice. But, but I, I like personalized because it brings up, you know, all of what we've heard about from the, the differences in these therapies and the therapeutic options to uh, the patients and what the patients prefer what the patients really bring to the table from fitness and everything to the genomics and how we personalize that genomics into therapy and think about profiling these each patient because each, each patient's profile could be different and, and really encompassing all of that into a treatment plan. There, you know, AI is gonna struggle with that. I think we're still gonna be employed for quite some time uh, figuring all these things out, but I, I think it's really I think it's really a challenge and, and the opportunity in our field and, and uh, you know, really appreciate you know, everyone's insights into this exciting time post ESMO 2019.
So thank you all for the contributions to the discussion. And on behalf of the panel, we'd like to thank you for joining us. And we hope you found the peer exchange discussion to be useful and informative.